This is Section 1 by its role. After Cyrax broke the Xbox, both Liquid Fritz and MF Doom immediately claimed responsibility for this modern day tragedy on this movie. Well, hello there. Hang on, Ron. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? This is a surprise to speak to y'all. That's not good. Mr. Cyrax, I hope you're enjoying the whole thing. Mr. MF Doom intercepted. What? Intercepted? Uh, Watch on intercepted. Wait a minute. This package. How are you enjoying your little package, Mister Go Mister Cyrax? Mister MF Goon intercepted it. What fucking package? The USB thing. The one I fucking sent. The one that has my info right. on it. Yeah, man. He. I have it all. Dude, they're dude, what? They're fucking with you. They're fucked with you, dude. There's no way. Cyrax, we just bricked your Xbox. No, I fucking had mods loaded. Those were the ones. What he just no. popped in was a 10 gigawatt kill stick that disrupts any technology plugged into it. Mr. He Cyrax, if you don't believe us, try plugging it in somewhere else. They just, they just fucking sent me my address. It's done. We know where you are. Hello, you. My name is John McCarthy, yeah, oh and I'm God. here to welcome you to the tour. Oh my God! In your case, twenty-three. Happy to have you aboard. Good luck out there. We're playing a little bit of stroke play today in this three-hole matchup. Let us begin. This dick and stag would allow him to jailbreak his Xbox. I can only imagine what he thought it was going to be like in his head. Coming in for a landing here on the green. Have a good tee shot. For the tour, that crack was big enough that Sarah and Mr. Chris Marty decided to call a team shot. Sarah is then going to Marty to the contract with him for the next day. Maybe we can get a kick left here. Safely on the green. From here, who knows what could happen, but uh, I'm eager to find out. And a seven foot putt for him. And I know it's kind of odd, but they're literally trying to be you. They're basically trying to do, they're literally trying to do what you do. Dude, you're not even touching me. You're just acting like a whole fucking. That's a great way to start your round, even par after, after a that quick one. introduction, Marty would ask Cyrax what they did exactly, and Cyrax would then dish out some threat after explaining what happened. What did they, what did they do to you? I'm not even aware. And basically what happened was, they you know that Barnary dude that I was good friends with for a while? Mm, not really. Mm, well, I got news for this boy. A friend of mine introduced us and whatnot. We got to talk and some of the friends. Well, he told me the other day that he was going to send me a USB stick for jailbreak and land. Here's a look at their hybrid. So that I can, you know, pretty much just like play any game that I wanted to play. All right, let's go. Yeah, you know, without work. All right, cool. Go for it. Well, you're not going to hit every green today. That's all right. Fingers crossed for a nice up and down out of this greenside bunker. All right, here's his second shot. I 
didn't think anything of it. And this is your third like, shot. I was getting weirded out by me staring out the window for what it was. Okay, whatever. So, I plug it in, and the other side starts to turn on. Ooh, really nicely good. done and on the chip and shot. Really and this next putts for his par. Randomly with uh, being very good one by two. Oh, oh. so Barry was. He was the guy. Barry was the one that offered this and the the uh go to the team that uh yeah. Okay, let's head to the next like you're not see he's setting up now two footer. Barberry just one over at the moment. Back to your friend that can the pack is actually intercepted or you get one I don't know. And one stroke off the pace as you tee off on this final hole of the matchup. Let's do this. Good shot. And we're setting up about 120 yards out. Good shot. And this will be his second shot. Yeah, I want the way that I can reach out to you and cut space to be private and talk to you. A man named Stephen Morin would offer Cyrus a spot, and I don't think anyone could have foreseen what this would do to Cyrus. On January 31st, Marty was supposed to stream with Cyrus, and Cyrus was supposed to be the one to stream. On January 31st, Marty was supposed to stream with Cyrus. Oh man, to, to go all that way and not drop, that's just, just too bad. This next putt will be for his birdie. Okay, he's got two feet to go here. And as that drops, he'll sign off with a par. Okay, let's get this one in the cup and finish this round. And as you finish up your round, one over par. Well, that is all she wrote for me. I had an enjoyable time ripping around the links with you today. See you next time. Uh, well, I got, I got to say this, so it does make me feel a certain type of way. So it does make me feel a certain type of way. I had a feeling it might. And, um, well, so, hey, hang on a second. Hang on a second. It's Stephen Morin, right? I'm O-R-I-N. Right. I'm hoping that it may be actually the Stephen Morin that contacted him and, and not somebody that just dummied up an account real quick. But, you know, if that's what it is, that's what it is. He's working on something very important. I can only assume that it might be a new track that he gave me a sneak peek of yesterday. Um, that's it's fire, it's the bomb, it's gonna blow your mind. Um, yeah, well, I, I mean, I have to, uh, I have to, to, to send some of the opinion. I can know that they're making a terrible mistake, but completely unrelated to me, I can assure you that. You know what I thought was, what I didn't have a chance to tell him because when he said that he couldn't make it because he was working on something important, that amazing offer that I'm making to deliver 
the new Xbox series. I personally, I was like blown away by that. And, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, I was floored that that those words even came out of your mouth. But I mean, what a tremendous gesture. Yeah, I, I mean, that just really shows true gratitude. And anyone who calls Sarah an ungrateful person is, is out of their mind. So what's more important than an Xbox? Uh, yeah, I yeah, I know we talked about the some important Yeah, I was actually working on some music pieces and so yeah. But, uh, Alright, so, as you can see, it's very plugged in, right? Okay. You see how it's plugged in? You guys see that, right? It's plugged in. You got power cords plugged in, everything ready to go. So, you have to go here and you need to go. Plugged in down here. Right there in the power right there. Now, you know how the only way to hit the power button is just to throw a button right here, like, go? No, but, okay. So, whatever you turn the Xbox on, you're going to have to it turns white and white stuff, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm aware of what happened. I'm aware of what happened. Happen. Is that if I find out that you are fucking with me, Marty, just know that you helping me out and then turning around and doing this shit is a real fucking thing. If you are. If you're not, then you're lucky. If you are fucking with me, just know that it's on video that deals that fuck on me, so sure. I start trying shit out. Yeah. Okay. I really don't. I really don't. People really hate this little guy and that, that's just what it is. Um somebody talk about the tactics so me and me and we didn't know why what was going on. We thought that he was still the same one. So we just called the moon. We did not call the moon. Well, we thought it was still the same one, so like, aren't we, you know, wait 15 seconds? And then, you know, I take it out, like, do a thing, hold on. I take it out, Xbox One was fucking turned on. We couldn't figure out what was going on, and then, no sooner than, we figure out that the ice that the ice box was very on the street with the fridge and um and a food decided to hop in the car and basically said, hey, this is what we did. He did it live on the car with you? Yeah, they did it with the fridge and got full of hard drive. Then for a friend of mine got to be super cool and got to send me out of the way and I'll be on Monday Pay to I found this out just the other day. That Arvin and his wife are part of the trolls, but the old US Houston. I found out that they were part of the buddy troll. She tried to set me up and make it work by a certain way. On February 2nd, Marty did another live stream where he announced that the Xbox was rerouted to him and that he would be hand delivering it to Cyrus. So, as most of you may know, some of you may not, um, Steve has been uh, kind enough to bestow a chance with the next box and he had it shipped out, um, which is a really cool move, a really thoughtful move. Um, but I was thinking, especially with recent events with this whole USB kill stick thing, that, you know, to the best of my understanding, the package was intercepted off the porch and replaced with another one. Um, and I know how important this Xbox is to Chance, and I just really wouldn't want it to fall into the wrong hands. It didn't get intercepted, the USB kill stick. The USB kill stick, according to Chance, was intercepted. Um, so you can see just how easily that can happen. Did I help fund this? No. No, 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 no. Definitely not. Um, but what I did do, what I did do was, I actually sent, uh, Steve, 
seventeen dollars, and I can prove it. Um, I have the receipts right here to get it rerouted back to him. Um, and the reason that I did that was because I wouldn't want the Xbox to fall into the hands of porch pirates or goons or the weirdo. <laughs> But sorry. So, um, what we're going to end up doing here is Steve's going to send the Xbox to me, and I'm going to hand deliver it to the champ. It's going to be passed either in a couple of weeks. And um, I figure it's the safest way to ensure that the package reaches its intended target. Possums as well. Possums as well. Yeah, I've been thinking this stuff too. I've been a victim of this stuff too. So, um, I made an executive decision here just to ensure the safety of the Xbox, guarantee that it ends up in the rightful hands of the intended recipient. And, um, yeah. On February 3rd, Clark did a live stream at 3 a.m. in the morning. This live stream was taken down, so we're going to have to do the busted gently restream. Oh, by the way, the thought that does prove my point that I've been saying this whole time. This actually does prove a point that I've been saying this whole time. Of course, you lying sack of shit. You said that you say that you do numbers? Look at my chat right now, motherfucker. You say, you say that you do numbers? Look at my chat, bitch. 458, man. 458 motherfuckers watching. What do you do? A couple hundred? I'm going 400 plus, baby. 400 plus. Just what you doing, bitch face, Marty? You think I'm buying a goddamn thing you're saying, Marty? Go at your goddamn mind, fuck that piece of shit. Oh, and I'm not cool. You're nothing but a little pussy ass little bitch boy. Hiding behind a motherfucking screen like a punk ass coward. You're a little fucking kid running his mouth thinking he's a badass. But really, you're a fuck boy. A lonely ass nobody. You're a little bitch that thinks he's got a life, but you ain't. Cause bro, unlike you, at least I get pussy, motherfucker. Zarek broke the ceasefire and went after Marty once again, Ooh. as well as MF Goon. It's suspected that Zyrax did this because Marty had the Xbox rerouted. On February 4th, Cyrax uploaded a stream called No One Owns Me, where he dressed up like a member from Toon Squad and tells Marty that nobody owns him. Apparently, a certain scumbag by the name of Music, that this headed bitch face Marty, thinks that he owns him. Let me tell you something, bro. You don't own shit, motherfucker. You don't own shit, nigga. Nobody motherfucking owns me. So Marty, take your fucking delusional garbage and show it up your ass. This is the thing, bro. I'm not loyal to you. Never have been loyal to you. Never will be loyal. Get a fucking goddamn hit, you fucking fat ass, no pocket bitch. You're a fucking stillhead. You're a druggie. You're a pill popping little fuck boy. That's all you are, man. You're mad because I don't bow down to you. Bro, you don't know realize who the fuck I am, Marty. I'm above you, bro. I'm above your goddamn pay grade, fat ass. I am above your pay grade. By far. I trust me. Like I said, I got people that watch shit. I got people that see shit. So, uh, fuck you, bro. Cyrus actually tries to make a point, saying that he would beat Marty in a fight, even after backing out of it every time Marty visited him. Maybe if he hits a goddamn treadmill, you might lose some of that goddamn weight, bro. You want to talk about how you can fight me? No, you can, motherfucker. I'll lay your ass down and shoot fucking shots, bro. Sit behind me and choke your ass out. It's done, so. Good night. Lights out. See you later. On February 6th, while streaming, Cyrus joins Marty's stream and challenges Marty to a forge arrest. 
And yeah, he's still wearing that pillowcase from before. Both them brave, we out here, bro. Oh, wow, look who it is. Both them brave. Look who it is. Yeah. Oh, look who it is. 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 Yo, Cyrex. 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 Listen to me. I'll give you. Oh, look who it is. It is Cyrex. Have been in this a little bitch thing? Yeah, what's up, Cyrex? What's up, Ninja Boy? Just hanging out with the Smash Box. How about you? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, great answer. This is so confident. You yeah. don't care better than me, I think. I'm going to go up, baby. Okay. Get them shot of it. What's that? Because I know you guys want to take your hand on your head, don't worry. Me and you, we're going to try and survive any race you want. Do you want to have a knife? I don't know. I'm going to clean up. Okay, I'm going to clean up. Okay. Okay. All right. And then here's what you fail to do. How do I know that? When I, when I meet you, which I will. Yeah. How do I know it's Joey, sorry, Then you're a fucking stalker. How else? On February 7th, while Marty is doing another live stream, Cyrus calls in to say that he has guards waiting to stop the package from being intercepted on the front porch with baseball bats. Hey, Cyrus. I know about the interception and it's not going to fuck my house. Sure it is. No, it's not because I got that. Yeah, well, funny. I got, I got eggs. Oh, man. Yeah, I got eggs. 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 Yeah, I for what? Don't blame me, Tronny. Fuck, did with you, the shit. Is that federal crime you call that? They're the ones who rerouted. Hey, shut up. It's gonna be my ex. Shut up. I get rather the next one. Sarah actually asked people to mess with the mailing system after telling Marty that it was a felony. In a leaked call, Sarah actually said that Marty failed to reroute the package. It's supposed to be here by 9 o'clock tonight. But knowing our delivery system, it should be probably tomorrow. Who knows? Yeah, Marty failed to reroute it. On February 8th, the package was intercepted and returned to sender, and Marty would scream about the event. So I could go straight into how Marty threatened Steven. He was sat there and threatened two families, didn't you? He was sat there and threatened his families, he didn't send you the Xbox, didn't you, motherfucker? No. Oh, yes, you did. Are they yet? Why do you stop that crack? Who's the fucking food, motherfucker? Maybe you have to hear it. You have to hear it. You have to hear it. You have Cyrus has called for Marty to let CIA hold up and threaten to take down Marty's switch before leaving. Watch me strut. Watch me strut. Watch me strut. You know what should I? I actually did the video. Here. Watch me strut. Watch me strut. Oh, hey, hey, watch me strut. Hold up, man. Hold up, man. Hold up, Look who it is. Look who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, why do you keep bringing it up? 
two beings, which, if you guys are unaware, is the Dino Prime. This being is trying to intercept a time piece that is supposed to be going two weeks. So as soon as you get back to right away, please do so. This is important. Thank you. Have a nice day. If people don't take you seriously, they won't even pick up your calls. When the FBI didn't work, Sarah called his grandmother Sally. Where are you? I'm calling my family right now, and I'm having a 15 hour wait. Hello? 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 No more, no more. I want you to stay tuned to it right now. Don't get tired of it. No more. I need you to fucking stay tuned to it right now. Don't get tired of it. He's for no. He's for, no. Yes, you came, mom. He's threatening to take all our fucking mail. She hung up on him. Finally, when that phone call didn't work, Stark actually called Marty's mother. Now, Wendy, listen. Don't hang up, please. I need this question. It's important. Your son, Nick. It's playing on intercepting our package as meant for me. And in case you haven't been aware, my doctor has been on close to the time. And I have hope that he's planning on doing it. Any lady that you can think of fucking stuff, I what he's doing is a federal fucking time. This will be the second time that he's done this to me. That's what happens when I turn the lights off. Are you here? Huh? And that's why I'm not a man. You got a good son, you need to sit on the side of the head, Mark. Turn it down, you're fucking great. By a couple of friends. And if you don't know what friends he is, he's basically going to do this. Well, he said that I come to be a kid, pretending that they were a jail from college. So they didn't make it to where I'm going to be when I was playing with my game. Only the person was like it on the end part. And he said, two men in peace with God, two friends of her. They pretended that they were like legitimate Joe victims. But instead, it turned out to be a violent just to be destroyed in the hospital. And it has been called. And it has been that it's not worth anymore. So a friend of mine from the other was being nice to be in the hospital. And he was out there to be out there to be out there to be out there to be out there. I got him from America, but we go to his live stream right now. He is live right now. Matter of fact, I got him right here if you'd like to speak to him. Hi, Mom. How's it going? Hello? What do you want me to do? I want you to fucking say something, man. And tell him, because if you don't, your son's going to end up in that old prison. And, I don't, and honestly, I don't want to see that for you. Just trust me when I say, I know what it's like, because at one point, like I said, I did go to jail at one point, so I would understand the feeling very well. Hello there, my name is John McCarthy, and I'm pleased to welcome you to PGA Tour 2K23. I have a feeling you may have brought your A-plus game on this occasion. Yeah, I have a feeling you may have brought your A-plus game on this occasion. We are playing a little three-hole matchmaking today, stroke play all the way. Let's see what happens. And so do I. And the only thing I can do is just be fucking dead stuck. Otherwise, I will be forever. Yeah, I'm just going to be fucking dead stuck. I'm just going to be fucking dead stuck. Yikes. And let's see how he does on this hole. When that didn't work, Sark left the stream. However, he did return later, trying to get Marty to admit to intercepting the package. But unfortunately, Marty was a little bit too clever for him. All right, sure, yeah. that's tough. Now, explain this again to Marty. Sure. What, what was the day you first time shut that video off? I wanted to just be me and you here for a second. He goes. This what is I out of the second is, cut here. Why is it that you feel like you have the right to do what you fucking do to me and attack me like you fucking do? I'm not attacking you. Yes, you are. You're attacking me by trying to intercept the package. When someone's trying to fucking be nice to me, you're ripping me off. What makes you think you have to do it? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, did you or did you not say that? I don't know what you're talking about. 
Okay, we're out of the dirty stuff. Now let's get to that real short stuff in the green. Let's do it. All right, this is his second. He's got a long pot to deal with here. Let's see what happens. No, I just want the fucking truth. That if I did not dance, that you were going to intercept the package. Stay tuned now. Stay on. Stay on. If you love our trust, stay on. And here we go. This one for par. I want to answer that question. I want to answer it right the fuck now. Looking good. And the putt drops there, there's your putt. And fucking say that you were gonna intercept those passes. That was the need. And you're at either part. Oh, yes, you don't play fucking. As a matter of fact, oh, by the way, Nick, I fucking lied to you. I am reporting. And, and I will be reporting your fucking. All right, fucking teeing off in the second hole of this matchup. You piece of shit. Later, Sire Kibu had a tree where he addressed his mark. Nice swing. Well, we missed Thank the green, but paper. that's all right. Life does go on. This one. And thanks for sticking around Man, the he's end. ready no to go. Let's see how this whole goes for us. Talk about pretty much anything and everything. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you soon. <laughs> and they've chosen a hybrid on this one. Okay, careful on this one. We're in the green side rough. Oh, this is his second shot. Here's an eleven footer. Could be a good one. Ooh, never like leaving those short. Let's see what he does here. He's putting for power. That's something that I do live for. <laughs> and that one will drop. And nice putt. Let's move on. And you're one over par currently. 
demand the best. If you guys are acting that way, put trust in your truck. <laughs> And as Bailey. we tee up on this final hole, you are only one stroke off the lead. Let's get it. All right, first cut. Let's do this. Well, you didn't, you didn't no. hit that super Over. clean. And here's his second so, shot. And the 30 years that I have lived and worked in this, all of Northeast Florida, this case is, is one of only a very small few that had this level, this type Going of with the hybrid. On the, on the He's going to get a little gritty here in the sand. Okay, let's see if we can right. get this out of here. This sport gives this back to great The effect, if any, of immaturity and petulosity or failure to appreciate the risks and consequences of the defendant's participation in the offense. And the effect of the crime. Excuse me. This is very calm and collective. Okay, out of the green side bunker. Let's have a nice up and down and ski daddle. And from the bunker with love. Nice shot. He's got about seven feet to the cup from here. 114 stab wounds. 49 defensive wounds, 35 wounds to the head and neck. And that's going to do it for them here today. All head. right, staring down a birdie putt here. And finishing in style, dropping that final putt in there for birdie. And as we finish up here today, it will be even par for you. And that's going to do it for us here today. Thank you so much for playing. And we'll see you next time. Matt. The court has reviewed and seen more than its fair share of autopsy photos. The autopsy photos in this particular case were particularly difficult. Okay. The 49 defensive wounds indicate that Kristen Bailey was cautious. She was aware. And she was doing everything she could to fend off this Another thing that a lot of people will learn when they go to prison is you'll see someone get into a knife fight. Some people can get stabbed over 20 times and still be fighting loose when they're trying to pump. That causes the person to keep on stabbing the victim until they stop moving. And even after they're dead, sometimes they keep on moving. They'll keep on stabbing. But there's other times where people stab someone over 100 times just because that's really what they wanted to do. Not because they think the person is still alive, they just uh, made it. Such a painful, horrifying death of someone that she trusted me. Her screams were most likely stifled by her own suffocating lungs. We lured her into a secluded place in the woods near his home, a person that she trusted, and we led her there under false pretenses. There was a heightened level of premeditation in this case. Based on the prior statements that he made to his girlfriend and his friend, he indicated that he was going to kill someone. At which point he determined that it was going to be Kristen Bailey, 
I don't know. But there was going to be a victim. He's shaking his head. Maybe there's something there that he doesn't agree with. But at the same time, he knows he's playing. Everybody's second to this new head right now. You gotta keep on strong puppy to block that area out, especially when we're talking about it. Indicated that he was going out, he was going to do it. He would take them into a wooded place and he would stab them. He would kill them and then run away with these people killing. He told his best friend that he wanted to kill someone to see what it felt like and he wanted to watch them bleed out. Wow. This particular crime committed with the weapon of choice as a knife, which he nicknamed Poker. That required a. Oh, he nicknamed his damn knife Poker, and this time it's built for But I'm going to give you my two cents at the end of this. What I think is going to happen to this individual is, you know, some people might not like it, some people might agree. Type of murder that is rare, unique. Yeah. Yeah. The court accepts that in 2019, of all juvenile arrests, only 7% were violent and only 1% of those were homicides. This crime is clearly an outlier. And it was shocking, and it is shocking to the conscience. Your Honor, nothing shocking to me, of course. The court finds that the defendant's participation in this offense was not the result of immaturity or impetuosity. He understood the risks and consequences of his actions. He previously told his girlfriend that he was going to do this. That clearly shows that he had been planning it. He attempted to cover it up by disposing of the murder weapon and throwing it into a lake. He then attempted to conceal evidence by hiding the shoes, the shirt, the jeans, taking a shower, stealthily entering his home, and then the act immediately after with these Snapchat videos in the back of the police car and the story that he made up about pushing her and her hitting her head, which is clearly refuted by the video of this case. All of that shows this court finds that this is not an immature, you know, impetuous type of crime. It makes it unique. It makes it extraordinary. So staring him down. What is also very troubling is that this crime had no motive. This was not done out of, out of greed. It was not done in retaliation, retribution, or revenge. It was not a crime of passion. It was not a crime that was committed because he felt rejected by her. Not done in it in a fit of uncontrollable anger. It was nothing. There was no reason. There was no purpose. It was done, it was like it was done for no other reason than to satisfy this defendant's internal desire to feel what it was like to kill them. You're probably not doing this one thing with your finances. One of my favorite ways to sell practice was earning. It's an epic if you use your money the same day that you work. You can access up to $100 a day, which means that you're tapping into your own money instead of taking on debt or using a credit card. Plus, it can help you pay your bills on time and avoid bank fees. So yeah, you can actually save money by using your own money. And the best part is, you know exactly what it will cost you. You choose what you pay, and yes, that can be zero. Plus, there's no interest, no credit fees. With my mom, it's simply access. Same day. Fast, secure, easy. I mean, while we for payment. Millions of people are using hard in to make every day pay it. So get your money in check and get up to $100 in a month. Sell up today. It starts with the earned in. Let me say that. Not you. Anybody but you. Actually, I prefer somebody else. 
No, no, no. James Sam. So I just learned that 80% of the content on the social media platform, formerly known as Twitter, is created by just 10% of the people who use it. That means a tiny minority of individuals are creating what appears to be an overwhelming consensus around dozens of important topics. The same thing happens in the mainstream media every single day. And that's led millions of Americans to assume that their own opinions on a great many things are out of step with the opinions of the majority, when in fact, they're not. These assumptions are called collective illusions. And according to Todd Rose, they're the reason entire societies, including ours, wind up doing all sorts of things that we the people don't want to do. If he's right, then maybe, just maybe, America is not as divided as we think. I ran into Todd at a stand together event, and Todd and I started talking. We, we talked for about 40 minutes, yep. and Brennan, the guy in the room, pulled me aside after you left, Todd, and he said, Mike, if there's a way to have that conversation again and share it with the world, I think we can save the Republic. <laughs> All right, so, well, that's a good high bar. Yeah, no pressure. Okay, so back to populace, the recent research, what illusions collectively are, are really at work in the workplace? I think that we're known for populace, which is just incidental. It's stuff we needed to, to get to the world we want. We need to drop that accurate understanding of what people really think. Right now in American society, there is an enormous amount of social pressure to say the right thing. Our brains have a conformity bias, right? All the people we prefer to be with our groups, not against our groups. That's okay, that's good. But we are absolutely terrible at estimating what our groups think because your brain thinks that the loudest voices repeated the most are the majority. On Twitter alone, 80% of all the content is created by 10% of people. That 10% isn't remotely representative of the rest of the public. If only 10% of people hold it, but you think it's 80%, your brain is going back to the majority, and unless I'm willing to go against my group, I'm going to say that. And the result is, the reason it's dirty jobs is such a tough sell is because nobody at the network believes that anybody would want to watch portrayals of what in a committed and curved, calculated, and premeditated manner without any pretense or moral legal justification atrocious This factor, this factor alone, makes this case and this defendant more than just unique. Also, for this reason, all of the reasons previously stated, leads this court to the conclusion that there is only one appropriate sentence. Yeah. The position of view in the terms of two lines. Mr. Fuji, having entered a plea of chief of the crime of first degree murder and adjudication guilty of the premeditated first degree murder of Kristen Bailey, I sentence you to life in prison. Because of your age, you are eligible for review of the sentence in 25 years. I order the Department of Corrections to notify you when you are eligible to apply for your review hearing. Madam Clerk, if you will please impose the minimum fines of court. Mr. Fucci, you have 30 days to appeal the legality of this court's sentence. If you wish to appeal but cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. You will be taken back to the State to the Duval County Jail 
and then transport it into the Florida State Prison System. Mm -mm -mm. We are adjourned. Do ball. Like I said, I ain't heard too much about this story. Whenever there's an extremely popular case out there, I try to kind of let it go for a while. Once everything's out in the open, then I'll go and start watching and reading stuff. But, man, I had no idea what this guy did it for absolutely nothing. I thought it might have been some kind of, you know, uh, love, hate, relationship type of thing. But if he truly did it for absolutely no reason, he should never be in prison again. 25 years from now, they say that he'll probably go on the parole board. And if I were to guess, he'll probably at least he has good behavior in prison. It's like that with the majority of people. They like to try to give him a second chance. 20, 30 years down the road. But this guy on the same deserves one at all. But what's going to happen to this guy in the closed prison system? See, this is the thing that a lot of people probably look forward to if they want a little bit of justice. Going to prison, not only if you got dirty charges like this, you can be terrified as an inmate, but also the guards. I've heard many stories people coming on to the channel breaking down how they're scared of the guards or the inmates in certain establishments. So, so, if I were to guess, that might not even make it to that 25 years in a row. And the way that they had that skin tight jumper on, man, they are disrespecting him all the way around. They're probably waiting for him to get to the penitentiary. Is he going to stay in PC the rest of the 25 years? I strongly doubt. I mean, you've got to be a mega superstar or something like that to be in PC for that. But at the same time, who knows, man? Because there are situations for individuals they never get touched. They're living a peaceful life like Chris Watt living a peaceful life or whatever kind of lockdown cell block they got. Another view on protective custody as well is a lot of people say to themselves, why can't they just go to mainline and let the inmates handle it? It's because even guys like this have loved ones on the street. If they end up dying in prison because they went to a cell block knowing damn well they would die, then they're going to try to sue them from every angle. So they try to check their angle. Lose no money that you throw them into PC block, even though they probably themselves don't even want to. That's just the way things go. But can he get got from PC? Yeah, I've had a lot of stories over here about that subject in the Florida Department of Corrections. Man, anything is possible. But, anyways, hopefully, you enjoyed today's episode and really keep a close eye on who your children are hanging out with. I know you might want to give them all the freedom in the world, them do whatever, don't never check their phones or anything like that. But Nowadays, you've got to, you've got to worry about every angle because there's psychopaths like this guy out here running around. Anyways, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, I salute every last one of you been supporting me since the beginning and everybody who's just now joining the Lockdown Compound. Y'all be, be safe and stay free. <laughs> At Vistaprint, we print signs so people can see your brand up close, but we also print signs so that people can see your business here. This case is truly an unusual one. A cold-hearted killer stabbed his victim over a hundred times and left her body in the woods before returning home and pretending that nothing had happened. Why did he do it? And why did his mother get involved? Welcome to Fear File. Text messages to his parents are revealing new details of Aiden Fucci's life in jail as he awaits sentencing in March 24th for murder. The state attorney's office has released more evidence in his case. Fucci, who is 16 years old, is pleaded guilty to the stabbing death of his schoolmate, 13-year-old Tristan Bailey, in their St. John's County neighborhood on Mother's Day 2021. News for Zach reporter Janice Harris has been going through the text messages and other material just made public and is joining us with what we've learned. Janice? Yes, Tom, we're getting another perspective on what's been going on over the last couple of months. And with that, in these text messages, 16-year-old Aiden Fucci refers to his jail cell as his bat cave a couple of times and often talks about playing video games on his tablet. In one message from Fucci to his father in August 2021, just a few months after the murder, he wrote, Hey, I'm going to go back to my bat cave and call y'all. So love you. Bye. The tablet is about to die. It's at seven. And in early September, he wrote this to his mother. I was playing Candy Crush, but I guess I ran out of lives. Fucci also told his mom he cannot play online games, only offline. 